Tropical festivities available now. Link at the top of the description. Get it while stocks last. Okay, it's fine that we're going to talk about this. Let's talk about Unova confirmed. And I can't believe I'm saying these words. Like, I remember the days when it was Hoenn confirmed. Hoenn confirmed. We're going back to Hoenn. We're going back to Hoenn. They're doing Gen 3 remakes. And we were saying that as early as Pokemon Black and White, actually. Because, you know, at that point, the Gen 1 remakes were during Gen 3. The Gen 2 remakes were during Gen 4. So it stood to reason that the Gen 3 remakes would be part of Generation 5. Of course, they wouldn't come out till Generation 6. The moment Sun and Moon were out, we were talking about Diamond and Pearl remakes. Ooh, Hawaii, the Diamond Head Volcano, the Pearl Harbor, Diamond and Pearl confirmed. And now we're finally talking about Unova confirmed. Now, I've done a number of videos on this channel talking about why I think it is way too soon for Unova remakes. Legends Unova, Ilka style Unova, even Unova ports. Like, I just don't think we're going to see that on the Nintendo Switch. And I don't think we're going to see that during 2024. For me, a Legends Johto game is still far more likely likely despite the many, many, many hints. But then I was super certain about Reggie Drago, so you can always come back here and leave me a comment telling me how wrong I was in the future. I think there's a gif going around on Twitter from that very video. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're so wrong. Will I be using that gif to reference myself? Probably, let's be real. So here we go, here are all of my Unova hints. And I actually want to stretch a little bit further back than you might expect to before the Gen 4 remakes. And I know that might seem weird because what do you mean? You're, wait, hang on. What? You think that was a hint in like Sword and Shield? And uh, the answer is probably not a hint, but it was kind of an oddity that in the generation that introduced Gigantamax Pokemon, there were a bunch of Gigantamax Kanto Pokemon for that Gen 1 love. There were a bunch of Gigantamax Pokemon from Sword and Shield that were introduced there because, of course, there was Melmetal, which was still relatively new at the time. And then there was Garboda, just kind of randomly a Gigantamax Garboda. Do I think this is a true Generation 5 hint? Uh, no, not really. I didn't even know that you can say that the inclusion of a particular Pokemon or evolution or new form is on its own a hint. It's when they start adding up. So let's have a look at everything after Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. And I guess that starts us off with Legends Arceus. Legends Arceus showed us so much Unova love. We got a new form of Basculin, Basculegion. There was a new form of Braviary that is not native to Hisui. Uh, there was a Zorua and a Zoroark. There was a whole Zoroark event as well with the mask. There was also a new form of Samurott, but by that logic, that also confirms uh, Johto and Alola Legends games coming in the future. That'd be pretty cool. And of course, there were the Pokemon ancestors. And we saw this in a number of different forms. We saw Clay's ancestor in, uh, and I've forgotten his name, Leon of the Pearl Clan wearing Clay's signature uh, cowboy hat, Western Texan hat. Is that the right phrase? I don't really know. Uh, with the gem in the middle. And then of course we got um, Ingo, who's not even an ancestor. Not even an ancestor of, of, of modern day Ingo and Emmett. This is just Ingo having traveled through time. Speaking of which, there's also all the old theories about Older, the champion of Generation 5 heading back in time because you can see a picture of someone that looks like older in the diamond and pearl clan tent suggesting that this person is very important to the legends of the Unova region or of the Hisui region rather and speaking of the legends we also got a big focus on the forces of nature with a brand new member of that trio and that trio was originally a Unovan trio and yet we get an amorous to complete this trio and turn it into a quartet here in ancient Hisui so there was a lot of generation 5 love although admittedly Admittedly, there was also a decent amount of Generation 2 love. Weird Deer, uh, Saluna, Overquill, uh, there was a Sneasel evolution in Sneasel, although that was a new form entirely as well. So yeah, there was some Johto love. I forgot Hisui and Lilligan. I always forget Hisui and Lilligan. That's another Unova Pokemon. There was a, we waited a lot more towards Unova. Scarlet and Violet also came in with the Johto love. There was a new Dunsparce evolution and a new Girafferig evolution. Very, very cool. But also in the Unova camp, we had Iron Jugulus, a Brute Bonnet, King Gambit, and two different paradox forms of Volcarona. Corona, which is a Pokemon that is integral to the story of the Unova region and ties into Alder and ties into the ru Desert Ruin area. And that's not to mention the Paradox Swords of Justice that we're now getting alongside the Paradox Legendary Beasts. Oh, and also in Sword and Shield, the Swords of Justice were part of the story of the post-game of Sword and Shield as well. I did forget about that one. Not super relevant, but it did make Keldeo available in-game. So Swords of Justice getting quite a bit of love over the last two generations. But like I say, the Legendary Beasts as well. So Gen 2, Gen 5, I don't know.
And for those of you who played the first five minutes of the Teal Mask DLC, yeah, the Indigo Disc is in Unova. And it's interesting because there was a tweet by Riddler Koo that talked about the four characters that appeared in the promo for the Indigo Disc, talking about how one of them held the sort of... Um, I can't remember exactly what it said. It said something to the effect of that they held the secrets of what was coming next. And so that led many people to believe when they looked at this character and went, hmm, he looks kind of like Drayden. And then we learned his name was Drayton. And then we learned his Pokemon was Arcaladon, a dragon Pokemon. So he's clearly the grandson of Drayden. And Arcaladon being a bridge, Unova is the region of bridges. So this all with all of the other evidence led people to believe that yes, this was confirmation. A, a remake of Unova, a Legends Unova game, that is absolutely coming next. But now I'm wondering if maybe not, because actually we know that the Indigo Disc, the Blueberry Academy is in Unova. It could just be that what Ku meant is that that character holds the secret of what's coming next, and what's coming next is the Indigo Disc being in Unova. So yes, all of these things that I've mentioned are hints towards Unova, and we're going there in the Indigo Disc. Full stop. That's the end. And if there is to be a remake of the Unova games, or a, a Legends Unova, or something like that, it'll happen like a good few years in the future for right now. This is what all of those hints were building towards. A return to Unova, not with remakes, not with the Legends game, not with an Ilka game, not with ports, with the Indigo Disc. Oh, there's also the other students of the Blueberry Academy, which a number of people have said look like other characters. So there is that, that are all kind of Unovan based, but now that does actually make sense. And I got a couple of other smaller notes written here. So Pokestar Studio logo. Uh, these these ones are all pointed out by Hybrid Hero. Um, the Pokestar Studio logo can be seen on the t-shirts of one of the characters in uh, the Sword and Shield in Paldea region. Sword and See, I messed that up completely. <laughs> Scarlet and Violet is the Paldea region. The only Pokemon, as far as I'm aware, I hope this is right, that are not available on any Nintendo Switch game are the Patrat line, Furfrau line, and then the Elemental Monkeys. Thank goodness they are not involved. The A-Spec Trainer cards are making a return to the TCG. I really don't know if you can count this, but they were, they were first introduced in Generation 5. But then EX made a return to the TCG literally last year. That was first introduced in Generation 3. That doesn't mean we're getting Hoenn, so I'm less sure on that one. There's a character in Sword and Shield who throws around the term glistening black and sparkling white. So, I... Mm, eh. So, is it time? What does this mean? Does this mean in 2024 Pokemon Day we're going to get Legends Unova games announced? I'm still not convinced. I think a Legends Johto game and a Johto revisit, which has had a lot less love, but still more love than other regions, is more likely for a full remake. If they were going to do these remakes or do a Legends games, why not save all of these cool new designs like King Gambit and Basque Legion and like all of these Pokemon? Why wouldn't you just save them for the Legends Unova game. It doesn't add up to me. And the other thing is, and we know that Game Freak do love to hint about what's upcoming in their current games, uh, but we saw this with the Sword and Shield DLC, is that the Isle of Armor was kind of a hint at Sinnoh. It references honey trees and their strong and agile style, which are reflected in the two forms of Urshifu. There's a number of things. I've done videos on that. And then the Crown Tundra seemed to be a big old reference to what would be coming next in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with a big open world, third person camera, and lots of the of like the past and future, the land that time forgot, the rideable legendary Pokemon and the crown of Calyrex. So there was quite a bit there as well. If we look to the DLCs in Scarlet and Violet in the exact same way, then Kitakame is not a big old hint to Unova. That would be the Indigo Disc. That would be the Blueberry Academy, which is actually hinting towards Unova. And actually, it's not even hinting towards Unova. It just is Unova. So if we are going to get some kind of Unova revisit, that's representative of that further down the line. The next game to come out is something more heavily alluded to by Kitakame. Part of the Japanese area of the Pokemon world. They're not revisiting Sinnoh. They're not revisiting Kanto, I should think. They won't be doing Hoenn. It's the one that is actually time to do. I still think we're getting a Legends Johto game next. But maybe you think I'm totally wrong, way off base, and just absolutely nuts. Or maybe you think none of this is likely, and it's like a Lo Legends Alola is the next game. In which case, I'd love to hear about that. Let me know in the comments. Also, if you're heading down to the description, click up these. The Tropical Festivities Pixel Art a Holiday Jumper, or you can get it as a shirt. Um, you will have to get them while stocks last, because once they are gone, they're gone forever. And actually, that's the case with everything in the store. Once it's gone, the store is closing. Uh, at December 31st, everything will be gone forever. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the incredible support. Uh, I'm getting excited for the Indigo Disc. And of course, saw high Pokemon Masters. 
Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye bye. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who have been supporting this channel on Patreon, including the big patrons of this month, Jed Rubin, Charmander Ansible, Anthony Lee, and The Alligator. Thank you so much.